Attention, acolytes of the Inquisition, gather before me, for today we delve into the sacred realm of knowledge concerning the revered space marines, the Emperor's Angels of Death. As an archivist, entrusted with the preservation and dissemination of ancient lore, it is my duty to enlighten you about these mighty warriors who stand as the Emperor's chosen defenders. The Adeptus Astartes, forged in the crucible of war and tempered by the unyielding spirit of loyalty, are the embodiment of the Emperor's vision for humanity's salvation. They are genetically enhanced superhuman warriors, each a paragon of strength, skill, and unshakable resolve. Clad in indomitable power armor, they stride through the stars, vanquishing threats to the Imperium with unwavering devotion. Created from the gene seed of the Primarchs, demigod-like beings who were the Emperor's genetic progeny, each Space Marine chapter represents a distinct brotherhood, bound by ancient oaths and sacred traditions. These chapters are organized into the Grand Adeptus Astartes, a celestial force of unparalleled might and unbreakable unity. Within the records of history, the Space Marines have stood as the bulwark against the encroaching darkness that seeks to consume humanity. They have waged war against the vilest of foes, from the traitorous heretics and insidious Xenos to the malevolent forces of chaos itself. Their victories have been etched in the stars, and their sacrifices woven into the tapestry of legend. While their prowess in battle is awe-inspiring, the Space Marines are not merely instruments of destruction. They are scholars, artisans and strategists. Their vast libraries and hallowed librariums house tomes of wisdom and forbidden knowledge, carefully guarded by the esteemed librarians. But let us not forget the most crucial aspect of the Space Marines, their unyielding devotion, not perhaps all in faith, but in vision to the Emperor of Mankind. Bound by the Imperial Creed, they exemplify the unwavering persistence that drives humanity forward in the face of adversity. They are guardians of the Imperial Truth and staunch protectors of the innocent. As we delve deeper into the lore of the Astartes, we shall uncover the sacred rituals of their initiation and the secrets of their gene seed. Prepare yourselves, acolytes, for the knowledge that awaits will shape your understanding of the Emperor's Angels of Death and deepen your reverence for their sacrifice. Let the study begin, and may the Emperor's light guide our path. In the darkness of the late 30th millennium, during the tumultuous era known as the Unification Wars. It was a time when terror, the cradle of humanity, was racked by conflict and division. Techno-barbarian tribes and nation-states vied for dominance, threatening the very survival of our species. It was during this desperate period that the Emperor of Mankind sought to unite the warring factions and forge a new interstellar empire that could stand against the perils that awaited beyond terror. To achieve his vision, the Emperor employed a cadre of genetically enhanced soldiers known as the Thunder Warriors. These warriors were the first examples of what would later become the Space Marine Legions. Enhanced with potent genetic modifications, the Thunder Warriors possessed unparalleled physical prowess, resilience, and combat skills. The Thunder Warriors proved to be superior to any other military force of that era. Their might and ferocity allowed the Emperor to achieve significant victories but their flaws soon became apparent. Many of these warriors suffered from mental instability, while others experienced catastrophic biological failures, their own superhuman physiques turning against them. Recognizing the need for a more stable and enduring force, the Emperor embarked on a secret and ambitious project. Within the depths of his genetics laboratories, concealed beneath the Himalayan mountains, the Emperor and his team of savants and gene rights toiled in obscurity. For solar decades, these individuals labored in utmost secrecy, delving into the ancient knowledge and genetic lore of the long-lost Age of Strife. Guided by the Emperor's unmatched genius, they sought to create a new breed of warriors who would surpass the Thunder Warriors in every way. The Emperor then embarked on a journey across the stars, scattering the Primarchs throughout the galaxy. Their destinies were intertwined with the rise of the Space Marine Legions, the Legiones Astartes, these legions, derived from the genetic templates of the Primarchs, became the backbone of the Emperor's forces during the Great Crusade. The early Space Marines, organized into regiments and armed with the ancient Thunder Armor, as their numbers swelled with the intake of recruits from the newly conquered regions of Terra, the Space Marine regiments expanded into full-fledged legions, numbering in the tens of thousands. 
The process begins long before a candidate ever sets foot in the hallowed halls of their respective chapters. It starts with a search, conducted by the chapter's apothecaries and chaplains, scouring countless worlds for individuals who exhibit exceptional physical and mental traits. They seek those with unwavering loyalty, unwavering resolve, and a burning desire to defend mankind against all threats. Once potential candidates are identified, they are subjected to rigorous tests and trials, designed to push them to their limits and beyond. Physical challenges, intellectual examinations and moral trials are but a few of the obstacles that await these aspirants. Under the watchful gaze of the chapter's chaplains and sergeants, the aspirants are evaluated not only for their physical prowess, but also for their unwavering faith in the Emperor and their willingness to sacrifice themselves for the greater good. The purity of their souls is scrutinized, and any hint of heresy or corruption is swiftly dealt with. All chapters, of course, have their traditions, and all recruit with different tests and methods, but the candidates are always the same, strong of mind, strong of spirit. For example, the Space Wolves, hailing from the icy world of Fenris, have a unique and distinct method of selecting their aspirants. It is a process deeply intertwined with the harsh and untamed nature of their homeworld. The recruitment of new initiates primarily takes place among the native humans of Fenris, who are known for their resilience, endurance, and warrior spirit. The wolf priests, revered figures within the chapter, venture forth from their mighty fortress monastery known as the Fang, descending upon the feral world. The priests, gene-enhanced warriors who serve as the spiritual leaders and overseers of the Space Wolves, carry out their sacred duty of identifying potential recruits. To assess the strength, skill, and metal of the Fenrisian tribesmen, the wolf priests engage in various challenges and contests. These challenges often involve feats of eating, drinking, and wrestling, putting the locals' champions to the test. Inevitably, the gene-enhanced wolf priests emerge as victorious, showcasing their superiority over the tribesmen. From these trials, the wolf priests select the most exceptional champions, those who have demonstrated extreme heroism, martial prowess, and exceptional skills in battle. The chosen warriors are deemed worthy to be given the chance to serve the Space Wolves chapter and are thus whisked away to the mighty Fang. Once the recruits arrive at the Fang, they are taken to an area known as the Gates of Morkai. Here their souls undergo meticulous and thorough scrutiny to detect any signs of impurity. The Space Wolves, fiercely loyal to the Emperor and vigilant against corruption, are determined to ensure that only the purest of individuals join their ranks. Following the initial screening, the recruits face the formidable test of Morkai. This trial is a testament to their physical and mental fortitude. The initiates are administered the first strand of the Canis Helix gene, a genetic modification that enhances their abilities and imbues them with the characteristic traits of the Space Wolves. To truly prove themselves worthy, the initiates are cast into the unforgiving wilderness outside the Fang. They must confront the dangers and challenges of the wilds, surviving against formidable beasts and enduring the deadly side effects of the Carnus Helix gene. It is a test of survival, resilience, and adaptability. Should the recruits overcome these perilous trials and make it back to the Fang alive, they are embraced by the Space Wolves with open arms. They are welcomed as full-fledged warriors of the Emperor, ready to take their place alongside their battle-hardened brethren. Or the Ultramarines, as the ruling force of the realm of Ultramar in the eastern fringe of the galaxy, have the privilege of selecting their initiates from the populations of the various worlds that constitute their vast domain. Being chosen to join the Ultramarines is considered an exceptional honor, particularly among the nobility of Ultramar, as it elevates their family status and standing in the realm. Adolescent individuals aspiring to join the ranks of the Ultramarines must prove their worthiness through one of two distinct trials, both designed to test their capabilities and resilience before being deemed suitable to become neophytes. The first trial, known as the Exposure Trial, requires the aspirants to confront the challenges present in the most formidable environments found within Ultramar. Rare are the worlds within the Imperium completely devoid of adversity, with most inhabited planets facing various hazards. These perils range from pollution and toxic wastelands, the result of centuries of industrial activity, to irradiated regions caused by either industrial processes or celestial phenomena. 
Younger worlds not yet fully tamed by humanity often harbor hostile life forms such as predatory beasts, carnivorous plants, and dangerous microorganisms. During the exposure trial, the aspirants are thrust into these hazardous environments, tasked with surviving for a predetermined period. Even if the aspirant hails from a world accustomed to such challenges, they are stripped of all aid and basic survival equipment, left to rely solely on their own resourcefulness. For example, an aspirant native to a death world jungle where communal cooperation is vital for survival would be placed alone in the heart of the untamed wilderness, facing its perils without the support of their community. The exposure trial can also involve traversing vast distances across extreme terrains such as icy wastelands, treacherous swamps, arid deserts, or hostile jungles teeming with deadly flora and fauna. In certain instances, the ultramarines employ an innovative variation of the exposure trial, where the aspirants are transplanted from their familiar environment into an entirely foreign and unfamiliar setting. For instance, a feral world savage might be transported to a sprawling hive city, while a hive world denizen could find themselves amidst the dangers of a predator-infested death world jungle. Some exposure trials are intentionally designed to be nearly impossible to complete, pushing the aspirants to their limits. Those who face these insurmountable challenges without faltering, surviving far beyond the point where others would succumb, are retrieved by the chapter's skilled apothecaries. These individuals are considered worthy of further training and advancement as Astartes neophytes. The second method of recruitment employed by the Ultramarines is the Challenge Trial, although it is less commonly utilized. In this trial, the aspirants are pitted against full-fledged Astartes in combat or other forms of competition. However, it is important to note that the primary expectation is not for the aspirants to surpass or defeat the seasoned battle brothers. Instead, their success is often measured by the degree of their failure. Nevertheless, there have been rare instances where an exceptionally skilled aspirant manages to overcome an Astartes, propelling themselves into legendary status within the chapter. Challenge trials typically involve tests of martial skill, with the aspirants engaging in armed duels against battle brothers. While the aspirants are armed, the Astartes often fight unarmed and without the aid of power armor. It is a daunting task for the aspirant, as even an unarmed and unarmored Astartes is a formidable adversary, capable of dispatching them with a single blow, whether intentional or not. Other challenge trials may encompass contests of strength, stamina, speed, skill, or mental fortitude. In some cases, these trials prove to be deadly. Nonetheless, an aspirant who fails the trial but performs admirably, according to the chapter's standards, is rescued from the brink of death by the chapter's apothecaries and deemed worthy of progressing to the rank of neophyte. No matter the chapter, surviving these initial trials is a feat in itself, for only the strongest and most resilient endure. Those who remain are then subjected to a process known as gene seed implantation. The gene seed, derived from the genetic material of the Primarch and passed down through generations, is the essence of a space marine's superhuman abilities. This delicate procedure, carried out by the apothecaries, ensures that the gene seed bonds harmoniously with the aspirant's genetic structure. It is a moment of both great hope and risk, for the process has the potential to transform the candidate into a paragon of strength, or in rare cases, result in failure or death. But the trials are far from over. The surviving aspirants, now bearing the gene seed within them, undergo grueling physical and mental training. They are pushed to their limits and beyond, honing their combat skills, mastering a vast array of weaponry, and learning the art of war. Under the guidance of the chapter's seasoned veterans, the aspirants are transformed from mere mortals into transhuman warriors. Their bodies are enhanced, their minds sharpened, and their spirits forged into a resolute resolve that can withstand the horrors of the battlefield. Having proven their worth and purity, neophytes are reborn as space marines. They don the revered power armor, each suit a testament to the chapter's history and lineage, and join their brothers on the front lines of the eternal struggle against the enemies of humanity. Within the depths of the Astartes bodies lies a network of implanted organs, each with its own purpose and power. Space Marines are required to have implanted organs in their bodies. These organs are an integral part of the process that transforms mortal individuals into superhuman warriors, 
dedicated to the service of the emperor. Let us begin with the first organ, the progenoid glands. These twin glands are located within the space marine's neck, just below the jawline. They serve a dual role, one for the continuation of the chapter's genetic legacy and the other for the creation of future space marines. Once matured, the progenoid glands can be harvested by the chapter's apothecaries, allowing them to extract the precious genetic material and cultivate new gene seed. Next, we have the biscopia, a remarkable organ embedded within the space marine's ribcage. This organ reinforces the skeletal structure, enhancing durability and resilience. Through its influence, the space marine's frame becomes sturdier, capable of withstanding the most brutal of blows on the battlefield. Remarkably and more sinister, we come across the omophagia, a unique organ residing within the space marine's spine and cerebral cortex. This remarkable implant allows the space marine to consume the flesh of other creatures and absorb their memories and experiences. By feasting upon the remains of fallen foes, the space marine gains invaluable knowledge, an intricate tapestry of past battles and strategies etched into their consciousness. Now, let us discuss the Magnificat, a wondrous organ housed within the space marine's chest. This organ increases the production of certain hormones heightening their physical capabilities to levels far surpassing those of normal humans. Strength, speed and endurance are amplified, turning the Space Marine into a force to be reckoned with on the battlefield. Next in line is the Catalepsian Node, located within the brain of the Space Marine. This implant allows them to control their need for sleep and enter a state of heightened awareness, resembling a form of waking slumber. With this organ, they can remain vigilant for extended periods, ensuring that no threat catches them off guard. We must not forget the Preomnor, an organ situated within the Space Marine's digestive system. This remarkable implant acts as a detoxification mechanism, purging toxins and poisons from their bodies, rendering them nearly immune to various forms of chemical warfare. Moving on, we encounter the Reductor, a gene seed organ found within the Space Marine's throat. This organ enables the Space Marine to produce specialized enzymes that break down food more efficiently, extracting the maximum nourishment from even the most meager of rations. It ensures their bodies receive the sustenance they need to fuel their enhanced physiques. Lastly, we have the oculobe and Lyman's ear, both serving to heighten the Space Marine's senses. The oculobe enhances visual acuity, allowing them to perceive fine details, detect hidden enemies, and see clearly in the darkest of environments. The Lyman's ear grants them remarkable auditory capabilities, hearing the faintest of sounds and discerning subtle nuances in their surroundings. These, my eager acolytes, are the gene seed organs that transform a mortal into a space marine, molding them into the Emperor's angels of death. Through these wondrous implants, they become the epitome of humanity's resilience, armed with enhanced strength, unwavering determination, and a bond forged by the shared legacy of the Primarchs. Within the hallowed halls of their chapter fortresses, these mighty warriors undergo a rigorous program designed to shape their minds and forge them into paragons of loyalty and unwavering devotion. The indoctrination begins with psychological conditioning, a process intended to instill within the Space Marines an unyielding respect for authority and an unbreakable will to follow orders. They are taught to set aside personal desires and sacrifices for the greater good of the Imperium. Through mental fortitude and unshakable discipline, they become the embodiment of the Emperor's will. But the indoctrination does not end there, young acolytes. It extends into the realm of hypnotherapy, where the Space Marines' minds are honed and shaped to resist the insidious temptations offered by the forces of chaos. Through carefully crafted imagery and auditory stimuli, their subconscious minds are molded to reject the corruptive influence of the warp. Yet it is not only resistance to chaos that is instilled in the Space Marine's psyche. They are taught to embrace courage and overcome fear, for it is said that many Astartes truly know no fear. Their minds are hardened, their spirits steeled against the horrors of the battlefield. They learn to stand unwavering in the face of death, ready to lay down their lives for the Imperium. Memory training is another vital aspect of the indoctrination process. Some Space Marines develop photographic memories through the psycho-conditioning and hypnotherapy they undergo. Every battle, every strategy, and every lesson learned 
are etched into their minds with unwavering clarity. Their ability to recall and analyze information swiftly and accurately becomes an invaluable asset on the battlefield. Through these methods, the Space Marines are transformed, not only physically, but also mentally. Their minds are sharpened, their instincts honed to a razor's edge. They become more than mere humans with extraordinary powers. They become warriors with unmatched mental prowess, capable of lightning-fast thought and reaction. It is important to note, however, that while their mental abilities are enhanced, the core neural architecture and psyches of the Space Marines remain largely intact. The indoctrination process may smooth out some personality quirks, but individual mental capabilities and intelligence still vary among the Astartes. But it is not only the gene seed and training that makes a Space Marine formidable. The armor of a Space Marine is a testament to both the indomitable spirit of the Adeptus Astartes and the technological marvels of the Imperium. Crafted from layers of reinforced ceramite, the armor plates provide unparalleled protection against all manner of threats. Its design is a blend of function and aesthetics, exuding an aura of strength and intimidation. The imposing power armor worn by space marines is not merely a shell, but a fusion of artifice and purpose. It is a second skin that melds seamlessly with the wearer, augmenting their already formidable strength and granting them enhanced endurance. The armored fiber bundles and servo-assisted interfaces respond to the wearer's movements with fluidity and precision, enabling them to perform feats that would be impossible for an ordinary mortal. But the true marvel lies within the interface of the armor with the Space Marine's own physiology. The Black Carapace is an intricate network of biosynaptic fibers and neural receptors implanted beneath a Space Marine's skin, usually on their torso and back. This process occurs during the final stages of the transformation from a mortal recruit into a full-fledged Astartes. The implantation procedure is conducted with utmost precision by skilled apothecaries, ensuring the successful integration of the Black Carapace with the Marine's nervous system. Once fully integrated, the Black Carapace forms a seamless interface between the Space Marine's mind and the power armor. It allows for direct neural connections enabling the Marine to control and operate the armor as an extension of their own body. This neural link facilitates instantaneous transmission of sensory feedback, allowing the Marine to experience the environment around them with unparalleled clarity. The Black Carapace grants the Space Marine enhanced reflexes and coordination. It allows them to move swiftly and gracefully, synchronizing their movements with the highly advanced mechanisms of the power armor. The Marine can execute complex combat maneuvers, traverse treacherous terrain, and engage enemies with exceptional speed and precision. Moreover, the Black Carapace enables the Space Marine to access and utilize the myriad functions of their power armor. They can monitor vital systems, receive real-time data feeds, and make tactical decisions with unparalleled situational awareness. The neural interface also enhances the Marine's ability to withstand the tremendous physical stresses exerted by the power armor, effectively mitigating the strain on their body during combat and prolonged engagements. Weapons wielded by Space Marines are no less awe-inspiring. Bolters, the signature armament of the Adeptus Astartes, are fearsome firearms that launch explosive mass-reactive bolts. These bolts are designed to tear through armor and flesh alike, delivering death with relentless efficiency. The iconic roar of a bolter's discharge strikes fear into the hearts of the Emperor's enemies and heralds the arrival of the Space Marines on the battlefield. Chainswords, with their whirring teeth and unyielding blades, embody the brutal elegance of close-quarters combat. Wielded with expert skill and ferocious determination, these weapons rend through armor and bone, leaving a wake of destruction in their path. Chainswords symbolize the unyielding will of the Space Marines to cut down any who would threaten the Imperium. Beyond these iconic weapons, Space Marines wield an array of specialized armaments tailored to the challenges they may face. Plasma guns harness the fury of superheated plasma, capable of reducing even the most fortified structures to molten slag. Power fists, massive gauntlets powered by potent servo motors, crush the foes of the Emperor with unstoppable force. Each weapon is a finely crafted instrument of destruction, forged to exacting standards by the master artificers of the Adeptus Mechanicus. They are imbued with the righteous fury of the Emperor, 
designed to obliterate the enemies of mankind and preserve the light of the Imperium. Those noble warriors who stand as the Emperor's greatest defenders, their combat strategies are the culmination of millennia of warfare, honed through countless battles and tempered by the wisdom of the chapter masters who lead them. Allow me to shed light on the tactics employed by these mighty warriors. At the heart of space, marine tactics lies the doctrine of rapid assault and surgical precision. They are experts in combined arms warfare, seamlessly integrating infantry, armored vehicles, and aerial support to devastating effect. Each space marine operates as part of a highly disciplined unit, harmoniously coordinated by their sergeants and battle leaders. One of the fundamental principles guiding space marine tactics is the exploitation of their superhuman abilities. They are stronger, faster, and more resilient than ordinary mortals, and they use these advantages to strike with lightning speed. The concept of the shock assault is central to their doctrine. Space Marines employ lightning-fast maneuvers to quickly breach enemy lines, establishing a foothold deep within hostile territory. This aggressive approach ensures that the enemy is constantly on the back foot, unable to mount a coherent defense. Space Marines also excel in the art of combined arms tactics. They leverage the full might of their arsenal, coordinating devastating strikes from the ground, air, and even orbital platforms. Tactical squads engage enemy forces with a lethal combination of bolter fire and close combat, while Devastator squads rain down heavy weapons fire from a distance. Assault squads, equipped with jump packs, rapidly close in on enemy positions, unleashing a flurry of close quarters devastation. This synergy between different units ensures that no matter the situation, the Space Marines have a response tailored to overcome their foes. Adaptability is another hallmark of their tactics. They are adept at analyzing the battlefield and swiftly adjusting their strategies to exploit weaknesses in the enemy's defenses. They possess a comprehensive understanding of the terrain, using it to their advantage to gain superior firing positions, establish kill zones, and set up ambushes. Their tactical flexibility allows them to engage in a variety of mission types, ranging from lightning-fast strikes to protracted sieges. A critical aspect of marine tactics is the art of shock and awe. They strike fear into the hearts of their enemies through their unyielding resolve and unwavering loyalty to the Emperor. Space Marines often make use of psychological warfare, exploiting their intimidating presence and devastating weaponry to demoralize the enemy. Furthermore, their ability to strike swiftly and decisively extends beyond the battlefield. They are masters of rapid insertion and extraction, utilizing drop pods, Thunderhawks, and teleportation technology to swiftly deploy to any corner of the galaxy. This mobility allows them to respond to threats with incredible speed, appearing where least expected and swiftly neutralizing the enemy. The Primaris Marines are a new breed of Adeptus Astartes, forged through the advanced arcano science of the Adeptus Mechanicus and the genetic wisdom of Archmagos Belisarius Call. They represent a significant evolution of the Space Marine gene seed, incorporating additional gene seed organs that enhance their physical prowess and combat effectiveness. Physically, the Primaris Marines are imposing figures, towering over their firstborn brethren. They possess enhanced size, strength and durability, a testament to the improvements made in their gene seed. The Primaris Marines stand resolute, their power-armored forms exuding an aura of authority and battlefield dominance. Their enhancements include three new gene seed organs that have been grafted into their physiology. The Magnificate, buried deep within their brains, stimulates growth and intensifies the functions of their other organs, enhancing their overall capabilities. The Belisarian Furnace, when triggered by a mortal blow, releases synthesized hypersteroids and corticostimulants, allowing the Primaris Marine to fight on with unmatched resilience. The Sinew Coils, Durable Durasteel cables encase every tendon and sinew, granting them tremendous strength and endurance. In addition to their physical attributes, Primaris Marines are equipped with advanced weaponry and technology. They wield powerful bolt rifles, deadly plasma incinerators, and devastating heavy bolters, among other cutting-edge armaments. Their power armor is enhanced, providing superior protection and mobility on the battlefield. These advancements make the Primaris Marines formidable adversaries and indomitable defenders of the Imperium.
The Primaris Marines possess a heightened sense of duty and a deep understanding of the grim reality of the Imperium's constant battles against the forces of Chaos, Xenos, and Heretics. They are driven by a burning desire to protect humanity and fulfill their role as the Emperor's finest warriors. While the Primaris Marines represent a new era for the Adeptus Astartes, they have not forgotten their roots. They still uphold the core values and traditions of the Space Marines, valuing honor, loyalty, and discipline. They fight with the same unwavering resolve and unwavering devotion to duty as their firstborn counterparts. However, it is worth noting that the Primaris Marines, being a relatively recent addition to the Imperium's forces, lack the centuries of experience and battle-hardened wisdom that the firstborn Space Marines possess. This fact has led to some divisions and tensions within the ranks of the Adeptus Astartes, as the Primaris Marines seek to earn the trust and respect of their firstborn brethren. The process of Space Marines crossing the Rubicon and becoming Primaris is a momentous and highly significant event. It represents a critical juncture in the evolution of the Adeptus Astartes, as well as a daring leap of faith into uncharted territory. The Rubicon Primaris is a metaphorical threshold that Space Marines must cross to undergo the transformation from a traditional Astartes to a Primaris Marine. This process is not to be taken lightly, as it involves extensive surgical procedures and the implantation of additional gene seed organs, all conducted under the watchful eye of the Adeptus Mechanicus. The journey begins with the willing Space Marine candidate who has demonstrated exceptional skill, valor, and dedication to the Emperor's cause. These individuals are chosen based on their exemplary performance and potential for further enhancement. It is a moment of great honor and responsibility for them to be selected for this transformation. The actual crossing of the Rubicon Primaris takes place in a specially prepared med vault, sterile and filled with the scent of counterseptic. The candidate lies upon a grand marble slab, intricately carved to collect the copious streams of blood that will flow during the procedure. The air is heavy with anticipation and reverence, for the outcome of this transformation will shape the future of the individual and the chapter to which they belong. The surgery itself is both extensive and agonizing. The Space Marine's body is cut open from crown to heel, with their ribcage cracked apart to expose their inner workings. Skilled apothecaries and cybernetic servitors perform intricate procedures, grafting the three new gene seed organs into their physiology. As the surgery reaches its climax, the Marine's physiology is suppressed to the point of apparent death. It is at this moment that the sacred rites and incantations of the Adeptus Mechanicus are invoked, with cyber cherubs singing requiems and guiding the marine soul back to their body. This critical phase of the process can be tense and nerve-wracking for those witnessing it, as the fate of the marine hangs in the balance. Time seems to stretch as their lifeless form lies in state, their flesh rent open for all to see. The surgeons work meticulously, stitching the wounds closed with countless needles while the hearts are electrified to beat once more. Then, in a primal roar and with renewed vigor, the marine awakens, breaking free from their bonds. They have clawed their way back from the precipice of death, reborn as a primaris marine. Their transformation is a testament to their resilience, the indomitable spirit that courses through their veins, and the strength of their newfound gene seed enhancements. They are now a living embodiment of the Primaris Project, a symbol of progress and evolution within the ranks of the Adeptus Astartes. Remember, the knowledge and understanding of these sacred technologies is restricted to a select few within the Adeptus, Mechanicus, Apothecaries, and the Inquisition. We must maintain the sanctity and exclusivity of this information to preserve the Space Marines' unwavering loyalty and the Imperium's unmatched military might. May the Emperor's light guide you on your path, and may you forever hold in awe the indomitable spirit and boundless courage of the Space Marines. For they stand as the vanguard of humanity, the defenders of the Imperium, and the living embodiment of the Emperor's divine will. Should you have any further inquiries or seek knowledge on other subjects, do not hesitate to reach out. The Imperium's archives are vast, and we shall strive to illuminate your path with the wisdom of millennia. Ave Imperator.